Yeah. Hey, this is Miranda from Elsie's Taxidermy, and I'm shooting a video today on how to mount a squirrel using one of our do-it-yourself kits. Uh, previously, the squirrel has been uh, skint and fleshed, and there's a video that shows you how to do this um, at our channel, Elsie's Taxidermy. So, if you don't mind, go over there and check that out, um, and be sure and like our videos. So uh, join me in just a minute when I go to wash our squirrel and we'll continue with the mounting process. This is where we keep our squirrels, uh, right next to the frozen pot roast and stuff like that that we have here at work. So, And I'll take the squirrel and we're gonna just plop him in the sink and um, let him thaw out so we can wash him. Best thing to do is just put it in some little warm water, not too hot, and uh, we'll show you in a minute how we wash him up. All right, Miranda, we back live. Yes, we're going to show you how we uh, wash our squirrels. We use a little bit of um, Dawn, and we just wash the outside or the inside of the squirrel. And you just want to kind of rub it and loosen the skin. Miranda, this is the best time to turn the legs and right side out again because when they're wet, they slip a lot easier. Yes, because your inverted feet are narrow here and you have to get this big wide part through the narrow opening, so it's best to do it when it's wet and when it has a little help from the dawn. So I'll show you how to do that. Take the foot, if I can get it to cooperate. and push it through, work it real easy, and it pops right out. And it'll continue with the next foot, pop it out. Now you're gonna turn your squirrel completely right side out. There's your front feet, your head, and your other front foot. Now you want to apply just a little bit, because a little bit goes a long way with this stuff. And wash it real good. And we'll be back whenever you're rinsing it. Yeah. All right, now I'm gonna show you the best way to rinse your squirrel, because you wanna make sure that all of the soap is out, uh, due to the fact that if you leave soap in it, it will not dry and fluff properly. So you wanna start with the head of your squirrel, you don't need real high pressure, just some good cool water. And you want to put the water going into your leg and kind of stick your finger in and work it back and forth to kind of shoot some of the, the water out and some of the soap. And then you're going to do that with all four of your legs and get it all over yourself for not any fun. Since this leg has been sewn up, or this foot, I'm sorry, when you put the water into it, you'll see it kind of it out and you'll know that it's <clears throat> being rinsed well and your tail don't forget about the tail okay turn them right side out again put them in a sink of cool clear water make sure you Rinse them really good. And to me, it appears that there's no soap left in here. And this is the way I typically rinse my, or wring my squirrels out. You don't want to wring, you just want to squeeze the water as you go down. And I grab my tail, work it back up this way, because you have water that's gonna come out of that, and then you're two back feet, you want those to come up so you can squeeze all that excess out too. And the best way to uh, remove some of the, or the rest of the excess water is to have a towel on hand, invert him, and try to squeeze some more of the um, the water out of the legs because you really want this to be dry and if you saw that you could see how it 
it squeezes out really good. And you can use, I don't have one here with me, a pen or something to kind of get more of the, uh, the foot inverted. So now the main thing is just go ahead and get it dry. Yes, the best you can. There you go. Squeeze it all out. Now what we're going to do now is roll him in this towel after we slip him right side out again. Make sure all your legs are pulled through. With it wet, they slip a lot easier, don't they? Yes, much, much easier. Even with coyotes and box and stuff like that, when you have to... Um, squeeze those feet out and that's a, a good way to do it all right so lay your squirrel out flat now um don't freak out at the next part of this process because it will not harm your household appliances but you want to roll it up and follow me we coming Put them in your washing machine. Drop it in. Turn it to spin only and let it go. It will get rid of a lot of the excess moisture. This is the best way to do them here at the shop, but Very at best. home it's it's hard to slip it into mama's washing machine if she's looking, so you can just squeeze it with the towel and then yes, if you don't on. have access to a washer. Alright, we'll Correct. be back in a little bit. All right, now that the squirrel is out of the washing machine, it's rolled up in this towel. Uh, when you get it out, it's kind of nice and um, it's not as wet. It's, it's really, you know, kind of fluffy, but you really need it to be more fluffy. So the thing we use here at the shop is um, it's a pet dryer, like for a um, groomer. You really don't need this but you really do need something that's going to get your squirrel dry, like a high-powered um, blow dryer, uh, air compressor with a little nozzle on it that will blow them dry. Um, but you really need to make sure that they're good and dry so they will fluff up really nice. So I'll get started doing that now. Now, hand up about how long will this take you? Five or six minutes. Alright, and we'll be back. Before I get finished drying the squirrel completely, I would like to show you a few things that will help ensure that your squirrel is as dry as it needs to be. Because it may appear to be dry, but if it's not dried properly, the whole mount could be, you know, done perfectly. But if that step is, um, if you, you didn't do it correctly, then it could ruin the whole thing. It just will not look right. So zoom in right here, Mr. David. And I have dried all of this really good. You can see all of the hair is nice and fluffy down the tail. You'll know that your squirrel is not dry when your hair is bunched up like this and you can still, you can see the dampness. And like this leg right here, it may appear to be dry, but it's not. It's, um, it's all bunched up and um, kind of matted together looking, so it's not, it's not right. What you're shooting for is this really, really fluffy fur. People don't understand how important it is to get it good and dry before you try to mount it. Correct. And uh, yes, it, like I said, it could be a, a perfect mount as far as you fall in all of the steps, but if this one is not done correctly, then it will all be uh, for nothing. Your squirrel is nice and dry. You can feel it to the touch. It's nice and fluffy, so it is ready to be mounted.
Not, I mean, we got a few more steps before we get there. Anyway, this is our kit, squirrel mounting kit for beginners. We pre-measured the squirrel before it was skint and found that we need an 11 inch mannequin. And the box will indicate what the size is in here. We have 80, 98 pictures, 98 pictures total for our kits. So when you read your directions, each phase of the directions will indicate what picture corresponds with that. This is very helpful, that is as well. Here's our mannequin. And we have our front legs, which will slip like this because this will be our running down squirrel. We have a tail wire. Uh, borax, pins, a hanger, screws, eyes, thread, a needle, and clay. Do not be um, surprised if you have way more than you need to mount this one squirrel. We uh, don't want to shortchange anybody and we want to make sure that these items, that there's plenty of it because this is not something that you would typically have in your house. So we don't want you to have to stop mounting your squirrel to go run out and get something if, um, if we didn't put enough. So hopefully there's enough for everybody. The borax that we have here that we're going to use with, um, with this squirrel, I'm not going to even open it. Here in the shop we mount so many squirrels that I have this tub full of it down here. So I'm going to first take my tail wire and you want to insert that into the tail until it comes out of the end. Now that one was, we had done it prior to this. It may be a little tricky getting the wire through that, but uh, as long as you're coming out of the tip, not a big deal, just push it right on through. We're gonna add a little borax to the tail. Oh, I can get it in there, right? And you just wanna work it down in there really nice and good all the way to the tip because this is a preservative and you want to make sure that the entire tail is coated. Now, I will pull this up here. You want to make sure that you have borax all down in your squirrel until you see it coming out of his mouth. There it goes. Cover the skin, this really keeps it from being, uh, dries it but it keeps it from being uh, kind of slick and slimy. You want it down in each leg. The easiest thing that we found to do this with is either a pencil, a paintbrush, um, anything with a blunt tip on it like this. It's not real sharp. Whoop, that went out of now. To get in the foot, work it all the way up to the toes. And you're gonna do that with each foot. This one's got a lot in it already. Actually, too much. Twist it around. All the way up. Oh, I might need some more than that one. You're making sure you get it all the way down to the All the toes. way down, yeah. That one didn't have enough in it, so I just added some. And you can feel it. It feels like a little bean bag in there. Now Miranda, we're going to show them how we use, how we get all this uh, preservative out in just a minute. But at home, they would just have to keep wiggling it upside down and work it out by hand? Yes, I'm going to show them actually just a small, um, just use like a small, this is a paintbrush I took the tip off of. If you don't have uh, compressed air at home where you can um, kind of shoot this out of the foot. You just take this and wiggle around and around until you feel like the preservative is mostly out. You want to get as much out as you, as you can. But that works just as well as compressed air. But I'm going to go out back and um, get the rest of this out so we can finish our video. We're waiting on you. Hurry right. back. All right, now I'm back from blowing all of the borax out, and you can tell that it's nice and clean. I mean, there's some left in there, but that's fine. But the majority of it is out of all four of the legs and the tail. 
All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is get ready to mail it. So I will have a seat. And you need to have your clay, and I'll show you how to make four small little tiny balls like this that will go into each foot. They ran away. All right, now we're going to They just have to be small enough to go into the pad of the foot to help it to stick to this, uh, the end of the mannequin. We're going to insert our front legs first. Which clay? Oh, yeah. I'm glad I have an instructor here telling me what steps I've missed. You want to insert that, shake it around, and you'll feel it go all the way to the pad of the foot. In there. Kind of hold your thumb in there so it doesn't come flying back out and you lose it. That's in the ball of the foot. What I do is stick my finger in there and kind of pull it out a little bit. to the pad of the foot. And this clay here is where the mannequin meets the toes or whatever so it'll be a smooth junction around Yes, it. so it will make a smooth junction between the mannequin and the actual skin. All right, now that we've done that, we're gonna take our arms, arms, legs, you know, um, the front feet, there you go. And this one always gets me confused, but I do believe it goes, is that right? Yep. Yeah. And it's kind of like dressing a baby doll. You have to be sure to get one leg all the way in the skin. It makes it so much easier, easier. to get the second leg in. Yeah. And if you're holding it just right, or your mouth just right, and then it'll slip right on in there. There. Nothing to it. Nothing to it. So easy, even a girl can do it. All right, now we're going to... Oh, I have to put my eyes and all that in. So, bear with me. I'll show you how we um, prep our mannequin. You need to make slots in his mouth and in his nose. So, you can tuck the lip skin and, you know, make your eyes or put set your eyes and all that. So, I'll show you, for example, here's one that has been done already. And that's what you need to do is make these little trenches in his mouth so you can tuck that skin in there. And also put your clay in the eye sockets to put your eyes in. And um, I'll put it even in the ears so when you pin your ears, um, it will sit in the clay and adhere better to the, to the form. So I'll do that now and I'll be right back.
and for time's sake, I uh, just used the Dremel instead of getting that out with my knife because it would have taken longer. And, um, you know, we just try to keep our videos as short as possible, short and to the point. So you're going to take your clay, fill in your eye sockets until they're flush with the mannequin. Like that. Open your eyes. Then when you set your eye, you want to center it in the socket, push it in, smooth the clay down around it, and then you also want to take just a small little bitty piece, roll it out a little because you're going to make his eye lid with that. And after you've done a couple hundred of these, you'll get really good at just breezing through it. That's centered in the socket. Whoops. Push it in. Smooth down your clay. Roll this one. It's a little bit too much. Maybe still. Eyebrow, and you want to check with the check the top to make sure it's symmetrical. When you're looking at it, you want it to be right. When it's on top like this, you want to just make sure your eyes line up. So when you get the skin on it, it's not wall-eyed where one's you know in uh, some kind of wonky position. All right, we're gonna put a little bit back here, and you could just take your knife again and kind of carve out. A little spot there to kind of set this uh, clay into for your ears so you can pin those and they'll look uh, more natural and if you use a little bit too much it's not a big deal all right now let's get our squirrel ready to go on and we're just gonna I kind of like slipping his clothes on. That's yep. a pretty squirrel. It's a beautiful squirrel. Nicely furred. The trick to a good squirrel mount is starting with a nice squirrel. Screw. Yes. And you want to put the screw in here, as my instructor has told me. Because I'll get to talking and forget what I'm doing. Now under here is the potential for you to take the hide and pinch it in between these two junctions right here. So you want to make sure that all your hide is pulled up and then it's not pinched in these in this little crevice right here. So we're going to set our screw so our front legs don't wobble. Once I pull some of these clothes back off. His front legs are not going anywhere, and now it'll be nice and sturdy. And then you want to insert his back legs. A 
go ahead and work it all the way down. And sometimes we use these pins. You can use any kind of pin that you may have at home or just work it down with your fingers. The pin helps with keeping it yeah. pulling hair out. Yes, and I'm just a creature of habit, so I'll grab that over risk and pulling hair out. But as long as you're careful, you should be fine. And right now, you're really not doing anything other than just trying to get the skin on the mannequin. Exactly. Not trying to do anything fancy with it. No, because it's all going to get messed up when you're sewing it and all that. So you don't want it to be, you're not trying to make it perfect right now. So I think we're ready to sew. Oh, we'll put our tail wire in. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. If you have some wire snips, um, that's good to uh, sharpen your wire to make a little point. So you can, um, Hit me oh. With the wire. Hmm? Hit me with the wire. Oh, I'm sorry. I <laughs> also forgot that you need clay Maybe I should be following my own instructions. Um, a little bit of clay, maybe that's a little bit too much, um, to put down in the tail because you're trying to build back up what um, meat was once there that will hold this wire uh, in place. Sometimes it's a little tricky and I'll show you a secret. If you add a little bit of water to your clay, just enough to kind of help it to slip down in there that helps. Okay, so now here's your wire. Go down to the base of the tail. And the borax sometimes can get a little jammed up in there. Hmm. Or, oh, we have a hole. All right, so let me sew this up and I'll explain to you what I did in just a second. What I found is that the borax or the preservative was um, uh, lodged in the tail and it was not allowing the wire to go through. So what we did is we just went through the tip of the tail and back up. So there's more than one way to skin a squirrel. Hmm. All right, here we go. Now you want to take your, um, your tail wire. Make a little hole back here. This is what I do just to make it a little bit easier to set your wire. You want to push it all the way through your mannequin. And these aren't the right pliers, but I can't find mine right now. So you want to just make a small little loop in it. And make it a little more narrow and push it right back into your mannequin. and just set it like that so it's not gonna pull out. All right, next I will show you how to sew your squirrel. And I normally pull the legs back out for this a little bit because it's kind of tedious sewing. All right, and <clears throat> your kit's gonna come with an abundance of thread. Like I said, we don't wanna shortchange anybody. So we make sure that you have enough of everything. This is upholstery thread. You can buy at Walmart or Hobby Lobby, anywhere, Michaels, that you normally buy your sewing or crafting supplies. You want to sew the middle of your squirrel first. And all you're going to do is put one stitch in it and tie it off. You're going to sew from this leg to the middle then you're going to sew from this leg and to the middle because if you try to start here and will go all the way to here your stitching will get off and it will become um, a little wonky so you don't want to do that where it's all bunched up on one side and it, it just doesn't look right so the easiest thing to do is start in the middle where your tail is right here and then go 
right through here and you're just going to put a quick little knot. Make sure it's good and tight. One more time. Alright, and there's that. So now I'm going to sew from this side and you just find your starting point where it was cut and you can kind of see where it comes to a V right there and if you were to stretch it out you could see that it's even. So we're going to start sewing right there. And we'll be back in just a minute. Yes. The squirrel has been sewn from end to end. We've arranged its fur on the mannequin as best we can get it uh, for right now. No need in trying to do it perfect. So right now we're going to try to pin, not try, we're actually going to do it. We're going to pin his eyes and you want to take the pin and get it in this back corner right here. Pick it up, pin it into the mannequin, if you can see the way I did that. So kind of stretch it out a little bit, find your corner, and set it. The corners are going to match up, so you need to make sure that those are level. No need in trying to get it all perfect, because it's probably still going to get messed up. Um, to set the ears, I use something small like this. You could use the tip of a pencil or whatever. Your ear is typically going to be right back from your eye, so you just follow that line and then you can feel around until you feel that clay that you put in there. And once you figure out where your ear goes, you'll take one of these yellow-headed pins and pin the, the corner, if you can see what I'm talking about right there, of the ear. Pin it there and that's the front corner, then you're gonna to need to grab the back corner and pin it as well. And there's your squirrel's ear. Sometimes you have little problems. Uh, this one has a little bobo right there. So no big deal. When you get it mounted, you can kind of watch it and tuck it and no one will ever see it. So now we'll pin the other eye. Stretch it out, find your corner set it. Just stretch it out, find your corner, set it. You can kind of look at your squirrel head on and see that everything is kind of um, level across there and one pin's not, you know, all kind of crazy. Take your pencil or brush or whatever it is, push the base of the ear into that little notch that you cut out pin, grab your front. All right, turn it off. Go ahead. Keep oh, going. back. I didn't know what was happening with the camera. It sounded like well, I was zooming back out. I turned it off. Oh, technical difficulties. Yes. There you go. All right. So now your eyes are pinned and your ears are pinned. So now we're going to move on to the mouth and the nose. You'll take his skin, flip it up like this. You're going to take a little ball of clay, roll it like this, and you're going to insert it into his nostril, and then kind of break off the excess. Roll it, fill up that little hole that you made earlier, and then rake off the excess. Now you're going to take a small ball of clay, and you're going to place it on top of his nose. And pin. You can use just anything. Pull it up over the nose and down. And then kind of smoosh it in place. A little stay. And the next pin is the one that's really yeah. important. This is very important. It's right below the nose where this little line is. And before you get to where your teeth start or where your teeth would start, you need to insert a pin right here and push it into your mannequin. This will set everything and cause it not to shift when you're finishing it or when it's drying. It will start to pull and it'll pull in kind of a crazy direction. So that's 
the reason that we do that. Now, we're going to, um, did you do it around the mouth? Because I can't remember in the pictures if we did this or not. No. Oh, okay. So, and it's really not necessary, but we're going to, um, so we don't need that. We're going to pin, oh, I can't pick up my pen, the rest of the mouth. You can, I'll show you with one of these pins. How you're going to take your lip skin and tuck it into these grooves. You can find your corners right there. Ah. You can kind of tell where the corner of the mouth is. Pin it and find the corner where you've already cut out and stick that in there. We'll tuck it in just a second. Find your corner over here, pick it up and go right there. All right, now take the rest of your skin and you're just gonna fill up these little trenches that you've already made And for people that don't understand, this is what we call tucking the lips yes. into the mannequin. For taxidermy. But this is typically where your um, your skin would be anyway, you know, if you were still alive. Tuck that back in there. And as you tuck, you're just going to pin. You have plenty of pins here, so just... Don't be shy with them because you really don't want that skin to pull out. All right, so for down here, we're going to find the center. I don't know if you could tell. It'll normally come to... Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Let me turn it off again. Turn it off again. All right. Amateur video uh, person here. Operator. Yeah. The color pattern, the hair pattern, it will all tell you where this stuff goes. So when you see it come to that small little V right there, you'll know that that's the center. So pick it up and stick it there, but you're gonna need something to kind of push it in with. And typically, sometimes you need a bigger pin, or I do for right now. And just kind of lay it down in the little trenches. Okay. So I'm going to finish pinning this, and I'll be right with you. And we won't go nowhere. We'll just sit and wait oh, on you. Oh, you're just going to sit there and wait on me? Yep. Okay. Well, let's see. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. The main thing is take it with however many pins you need to pin the mouth up to where it looks convincing. Yes, that it's a mouth, a squirrel's mouth. And what would you say, Miranda? Ten days, two weeks for it to completely dry? Yes. Yes, ten days to two weeks. Okay. Well, you really can't see how it turned out because there's like pins everywhere. <laughs> but, um... You can tell that it's all the skin is where it where Supposed it should be. be. Yeah, in the place that it should be. And you take something small like that, and you can kind of work it around in your nostrils to kind of open them up a little bit, and they look more realistic. All right. So let's kind of clear this off. All of our squirrel kits, whether you hang them on the wall or put them on a table, they will all come with a hanger. This hanger would normally attach right here on the belly, and you would hang this on the wall. No wood needed. Um, sometimes driftwood's hard to find. A lot of people don't have access to it, so that's an option for them to just hang it on the wall. Uh, since we have wood here at the shop, I just thought that I would show you um, what your option is here. Oops, running away from me. When you do have uh, a piece of wood. I pre-drilled some holes in here. Um, so we can attach the squirrel. Uh, the main thing you want to do is make sure that your toes don't hang over 
because when they do, they tend to get broken off if you move it around, you know, um, a lot if you're taking it on and off the wall or whatever. Uh, so just make sure that it's wide enough to accommodate your squirrel. So I will attach this squirrel to this piece of wood. This is those times when you need three hands. Yes. And you'll feel it kind of grab once it gets into the squirrel. Okay. So he looks nice and sitting on a piece of wood. So what I'll do now is uh, find my brush. And you want to kind of pull your hair, not really hard, but kind of manipulate it to um, the places that it's supposed to be. And then you want to brush him out a little bit. Huh? Yeah, I'll keep turning it off. I I'm might have to teach to... the teacher. Oh, well, here we go. All right. So right now I'm only um, taking the hair, kind of making sure it's um, where it should be. Sometimes you'll find that the squirrels have these crazy little lines in them. Um, most of the time it's just a little tug of the hair that will will fix it. This squirrel has a bobo. I don't know if you can zoom in on that. This is where the bullet came out of the head. And as you're watching your squirrel, just kind of pinch it together like that. And you can basically hide a lot of uh, problems, deformities. Um, injuries, whatever you want to call them. All right, and we'll finish kind of putting everything together, making sure that it's all set in the right place. Like we told you before, don't worry about doing this until this step because you can make his hair all beautiful and nice and perfect, but um, it's not going to really matter because you're going to be uh, tossing them around and, you know, fooling with them. And it's um, on the toes. And yeah, all that. So it's just fixing that. All right. So um, on these squirrels, you will need to pin the toes. Otherwise, when they dry, they could go all crazy di uh, directions. And the way you want to do this is take this little yellow-headed pin, and you're only getting, like, the corner of the toe right here and pinning through that and into the wood. And again, I don't know if you could see it, just all the way down in that little, at the edge, and pin, and kind of straighten them up. And you don't ever want to put them out flat like that because it makes it look Hmm, not really natural to me. You want to kind of put a little bit of uh, bend in it to make it look like he's actually grabbing onto something and not just um, like he's climbing. So. This is one of those places where you can't hurry up. You just got to stop and do it. Mm-hmm. That's why they say taxidermy requires lots of patience. It's tedious. And that's just part of it. You're not going to leave a tail like that when you throw, are you? Oh, no, 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 no. We're going to dress him up. That's a different position for yeah. sure. <laughs>
I know, folks. She moves kind of slow, but she yeah, gets it done. Yeah, yeah. Slow and steady wins the race. Right, one more foot. Mm -hmm. This is oh. going to be a good squirrel to put with the one I mounted the other day, running yes. up. Uh-oh, got all my pins. Run away. I've probably used too many in the mouth. All right, so that's the last toe. And the easiest way to do the hair is to take the gloves off because they don't really allow you to um, play with the hair real good. It doesn't sit really good. All right, so now what you want to do is trim. Squirrel we mounted the other day. Mm -hmm. Get that squirrel we mounted the other day. Trim the tail. Go ahead and position the tail however you want it to be. Um, this is the simplest way that I've been taught and that I've learned uh, when you're first starting out before you want to get real fancy with it and do the S's and the curls and all that kind of stuff is to just kind of put a little arch in it. You want to extend your tail all the way out and take your clippers Go to the base and back just a fraction. That way when you clip your wire, pull your tail back, it will hide that wire that's under there. The best way to fluff up a tail is with your fingers, just raking them over like that. Lay it back down. You can take a, a small brush, but this Squirrel has a really nice tail, so you want to make sure it shows it off. And then we put a little hairspray on it. And I love hairspray, so I'm not going to be shy about it. You just want to make sure you don't spray it too close because then it won't, um, it won't look right. Okay, so here is the squirrel that... Um, we've mounted today. And that's a running down squirrel using the squirrel mounting kits for beginners. Uh, Mr. David mounted this one. Uh, that's a running up squirrel. He mounted that just a few days ago. Okay, folks, and you have to admit, there's not much difference in the quality of work there. No. Mine was shot up real, real bad, but I was of able course. to fix it all. Yeah, of course, no. of course. No. I think that's real good, Miranda. Anything else you have to say, ma'am? No, thank you so much for uh, tuning in, and we want you to go please uh, like all of our videos and subscribe to our page. We're going to have a bunch of videos coming out in the near future, and uh, we just thank you for being interested in the art of taxidermy. Have a great day.